Hello, and welcome to Dig Sketch, a channel dedicated to digital sketching for architects. I'm Harvey Miller, and today I'm going to go through how to make your sketch concept plans look more thoughtful, professional, and compelling, which will give you more confidence when presenting to your clients. I'll walk you through the main steps of my process using Morfolio Trace and Procreate. First, we'll start with the fundamentals, how I set things up, and the basic elements that need to go into every concept plan. Next, we'll get into the work behind the work, the iteration process and the design thinking that goes into a sketch, which ultimately shows through in the end. And lastly, we'll wrap it up with how I finalize a sketch, how to clean things up and annotate it so it's client ready. So grab your iPad and let's get into it. Now a concept plan like this is important because it may be the first iteration you share with a client. Sometimes these initial concept plans are more loose and can give a bit of energy. Sometimes they're a little more refined and need to show off specific critical dimensions. Regardless, they need to be thought through, clean enough to be understood and professional. And when you pass it on, you don't know who it might go to in your absence. So it should provide enough context, orientation, and description to explain your ideas. And it should always have a project title, a scale, a north arrow, and an indication of what the drawing is, in this case, a ground floor concept plan. And most of all, your passion should shine through this drawing. If this is your first impression to leave on the client, you want to set a positive tone for the rest of the design process. So let's kick things off with Morfolio Trace. If you can find your project site in their maps feature, this is the best because it comes right into scale. And I use this all the time, even to just analyze other buildings and projects. If you don't bring in the map and just bring in your plot plan, you can set the scale easily here. Sometimes I bring in various background drawings and need to align them. And both Morfolio, Trace, and Procreate could definitely improve how they do this. So you need to zoom in if you want to align things at a decent level of accuracy. But if you zoom in too far and your image fills the iPad screen, you can't zoom back out. You could only scale the image. There is a hack for this in Procreate, which I'll get to later. But Photoshop on the desktop actually handles this the best. We'll save that for another video. Once I have my background content aligned, I set up my grid and draw in my own scale. I then draw my property lines in and my setbacks and start blocking in the elements of the program. The area tool is super helpful for this. I also use this all the time. But note that it's not super accurate. It's usually short by a few percent because it measures to the inside edge of your stroke. But it's okay to use this at an early stage just to ensure you're generally sketching things in the right ballpark. And so with a solid base to scale with an idea of our site constraints and our program, we know what we have to work with and the space we have to work within. Now we can move on to the next stage. At this stage, you want to just get all your ideas out. You want to test things and break things. I start with a fat pen here and go thinner as my ideas start to flush out. One of the key things that make these plans look the way they do is the thought process that went into them. You're looking at a lot of design thinking here. It's like an iceberg, you're just seeing the very tip. And so this next stage is about building that iceberg of logic that will justify all of your design moves. And with that, it'll be much easier to present your plan with conviction. During this process, I start to distill out key ideas about how I might organize a space, where the key views are, or how a sequence of experience might be. I'll note all this off to the side. I show key constraints that are directly affecting the design. These are all the things you may need to explain while presenting to justify why you've done what you've done. For example, why is this walkway here? Or where do you need privacy or sound barriers? The iteration process is about uncovering and synthesizing all these considerations into loose blobs on your page, similar to the real life process of using actual trace paper, but without the physical mess. And these big blobs are meant to move around until you distill out the project's key priorities. 
Then you start to strip things away and focus in on what's most important. It's only after this exercise you have an understanding of what you should keep. Now with Morfolio Trace, I always get lost in the layers. One hack I use is to label the layers here in the corner with a big note that I can see from the thumbnail panel on the side. In Procreate, you group layers into folders, which I find extremely useful. More on that later. Also, if I'm iterating in Procreate, it's easier to take a screenshot off the web and paste it directly in. So you can see here, I can quickly organize a bunch of loose ideas into different folders. Back to Morfolio Trace. Another great feature here is whenever you lay down a new layer, it's oriented to your current view. I use this as a hack to set up multiple grids, kind of like how UCS works in AutoCAD. So I could jump over here, sketch on this grid, then jump back over here and sketch on this grid. And it works great for radial plans as well. I'll walk through my process for this in another video, but it's something I find extremely helpful for buildings or sites that have multiple grids. Once I get to a general idea of the major line work, I start to firm things up using a smaller pen or pencil to build up my construction lines. Sometimes I'll just clean up the lines a bit here and leave it at that. Other times I need to tighten things up in order to arrive at a more finished drawing. And again, this is where trace really shines and where I use the ruler the most to set out key dimensions with a little more precision. And you wanna take your time here and get things right so you have a clean base to start with in the next stage. Here I use the ruler to set out the critical dimensions from the property line to locate the building's edge. I take off the key dimensions and then can easily extend these lines out. And this is exactly how I did it many years ago before we all started sketching on screens. And ultimately I'll arrive at a drawing like this. Or this. You want a crisp base to begin with where most of the thinking is done. And now it's just a matter of making it presentable. Now you could easily continue this drawing and trace, but for me at this stage, I need Procreate's more robust brush tools and layer management system. And you'll see why. So when I bring it into Procreate, the first thing I do is set up the grid, which is easy to do if you have your scale here in the corner. If you bring in new content and are scaling it, you may run into this issue of scaling the drawing up and not having space outside of the drawing to pinch and zoom back out to adjust your view while you're in scale mode. I found that if you click here on snapping and just click on one of these, now you can zoom in and out without leaving the scale tool. So you can adjust your view, then click it again, and now you can go back to scaling your image. I find this necessary because you need to zoom in a certain amount to achieve a certain level of accuracy. I don't know if they intended to do that, but it's a nice hack that works for me. Then I test my line weights, which will vary depending on the resolution of your canvas. A nice feature here is these presets. You can just click and hold to add or delete one. And I'll typically set up three or four line weights. So I start with the thickest lines, the buildings. You want these to stand out against the background. And I usually freehand sketch the final line work, but I'm just tracing over my hard lines underneath. Then I'll test out a few other areas to make sure the line weights all work together, drawing up the site and key elements in the landscape, maybe test out the trees, and then I layer in the thin lines. Adding details like this helps give the drawing some texture while conveying the scale or use of a space without having to spell it out. This can be furniture or a basic paving pattern or landscape elements. Here you can tell how this hotel lobby is oriented and how you would generally circulate through it. With these kinds of details, you're able to walk the client through the experience and add more details verbally while you're presenting to paint an even clearer picture and get them excited about the space. Next, I add colors and shadows. Again, this is for visual clarity. It helps you focus the viewer's attention on what's important and shadows help visually communicate depth and height. With all this, the viewer can easily see what's building versus landscape where people can walk, where do they enter from, where do they park. You want all of this to be self-explanatory, just visual without words. And at this point, I usually have a lot of layers, but they're easy to find and select when they're in folders. Also, you can set it up so if you hold the quick menu button, then click on your drawing, you can see and select the layer you need. And if you want to isolate a layer, just hold on the checkbox here, 
and then hold again to turn on all the other layers. So I don't spend much time labeling layers. You want this to be a very quick and intuitive process. And when you want to consolidate, I love being able to just pinch and merge. It's little intuitive details like this that I love about Procreate. And another one of the main reasons I use Procreate at this stage are a few key brushes that I found really helpful, such as this pressure sensitive pen, which allows me to color in small detailed areas if I press lightly, then cover larger areas by pressing harder. I also use this same brush as my default eraser, or this soft brush I use to create subtle gradients, or this light pen to create lighting effects. And this marker I use for shadows. I have created a few versions of this one for different sun angles. I'll make a more in-depth video on my brushes in the future. For now, I'll leave a link in the comments to download a few of my key brushes. And another thing I really love about Procreate is its gestures. You can set up a three finger drag down to copy and paste. You can also copy from multiple layers at one time. You can select multiple layers by swiping right on them in the layer palette. And if you've used masks before in Photoshop, you'll love the masks in Procreate. And then there's Page Assist, another game changer from Procreate. Look how quickly I can scroll through this heavy PDF that normally would be slow and clunky to get through if I were using Acrobat on my desktop. And it makes the process of designing across multiple stories in a building so fluid. You could zoom into one area and then quickly scroll through the other levels of the building, sketching on each one. Acrobat and Morfolio Trace just can't do that. Bluebeam can, but Procreate is just so much more fluid to use. And once the colors and shadows are done, I start annotating. With all of the basic elements visually represented in the drawing, this leaves room for the annotation to be more descriptive, more about the experiences. We're not just labeling spaces, we're trying to paint a compelling picture in the client's mind. So I'll plan it out first, roughly sketching out everything I want to present and where it will sit on the page. Make sure you organize it nicely so the overall composition looks balanced and generally aligned. Arrows can be straight or curved, just keep it consistent, visually organized and clean. The nice thing on Trace or Procreate is the ability to move text around after you write it. I do this all the time to further align things in the end. And then I just wrap up those finishing touches, title, north arrow, scale, and that's it. So as you can see, there are strong pros and cons to both Morfolio Trace and Procreate, and it really just depends on what you're trying to accomplish with your sketch or presentation. As for me right now, I need both, but who knows what the future holds. The hardware and software I've used for digital sketching over the past 16 years has evolved over time and will continue to evolve. The important thing is to just reassess your tool shed every few years and sharpen your sword accordingly. So if you found any of this helpful or you try to test out any of these techniques in your own presentations, let me know down in the comments. And if you wanna see more great features that make Morfolio Trace the best app for sketching plans, click here. And to see more of the techniques I use in Procreate to create compelling elevations and perspectives, click here. And until then, I'll see you in the next video.